I'm talking relationships Worth more than money No time for the fake or the phony Tweezy jump the gym It's so evident Link up with the gang I'm talking relationships Worth more than money First of all, disclaimer This is the camera I need to look at you, F you, you Tweezy, for making me come out the house and do it. <laughs> asking me to come out the house and do it. I'll never leave the studio. Never. I bet. Never. He said, come through, and you one of them type of people I got to do this for. Yeah, for man. Real. Yeah. We, it's, it's only right, bro. It's only right. It's only right. And, it's, and, and we here with episode six Hi-yah. of Relationships Worth Money podcast. Worth, worth more than money podcast. Okay. Relationships Worth More it's, Than Money. It is worth money, but, you know. More than. It's more than. Bro, it's network. It's your net worth. Ben's taught me that a long time ago. Well, yeah. He tried to teach me a long time ago. Yeah. And just... shout out, shout out to, to bro Ben's, yeah. Big Ben's. And um, man, this guest I got right now is we crossed paths so many times, but never really got to sit down and chop it up. We just knew each other from, i.e., the studio that I used to work at. Um me and Benz, you being there, and then JL. So it was always some kind of way we were connected, connected, but we never got to sit down tracking, tracking vocals for Bucky, uh, man, for your, for your, for your, uh, for your tape, for the tape. You know what I'm saying? Doing Who made all this beat? Yeah, yeah like I so it was salty like, for 13 minutes while we tracked. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> we would see each other all the time, and I'd be like, "Yo, why the fuck I haven't met O yet?" You know what I mean? And Definitely now, like I owe you money. Right. I'm like, damn, bro, where the fuck oh it? So Ben's like, yo, Tweez, you and oh, y'all need to get together. He always said it. Every time you see me, you, you got what oh yet? You got what oh yet? But now, finally got my bro, oh. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to O. Shout out to you, man. Welcome, bro. Like I said, I feel like this is going to be a very cool platform, bro. I man. appreciate you opening this for everybody in the DMV, everybody that you know beyond the DMV because yeah. you're a worldwide type of nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. You know. And you go, yeah, actually, I say, man, this is a cool experience, bro, for you to actually call me out and, and, and go through things, man. This is this is dope. Yeah, bro. Because this creative stuff is 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 what we live for. I appreciate it, bro. We was chopping it up earlier about that, too, and you was like, yo, I really can't judge a creator for being creative. It take a lot. It really take a lot, like, to even put yourself out there, to even put yourself in a position to be judged or... Because, you, first of all, you and your... Like, I know when I'm doing beats, yeah. it's like, this is something. Nah, this ain't nothing. And right. then, like, you get artists around you, and, like, you got a your certain group, and it'd be like, oh, y'all gassing me. But yeah. then they add on, and it's like, oh, this might be something. But then you see that, how it affects others, and it's like, okay, now you get that confirmation... It's it's a different feel. It really is a different feel. And, and and when you finally get a hold of that, and you understand how tough it is to kind of get yourself into that position just to start, mm-hmm. it's hard to look at somebody else and go, "Man, that's trash," or "Man, that's the." Obviously, there's I like this. This is for me, right. but I can't really look at you and go, "Nah, you should stop doing this." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, I can't right, really look right. at you and go, "Nah, this isn't you," because that's you today. And, yeah. and as you know, like. Music's about growth. It's a reflection of yourself. So Definitely. today you're this. Tomorrow, tomorrow you, can be you can be everything else. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah, man. And, and just to give a, a a brief, like, of who you are, man. Like, I know you from the studio. I know you for being a dope producer, engineer, sure. uh, connector. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's for those at. who don't know, give them a little brief, man. Like, where you from? What started everything? My name is Omar. Yeah. I grew up in Centerville. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Valanda's my mom. Shelly's my mom. Uh, Ray's my father. Michael's my father. And uh, I grew up in church. I grew up in, in, in a Pentecostal church. Mm-hmm. And that's where all my formative music comes from as far as actually playing music and, and, and learning music and loving music. It was because, again, in church, especially in a Pentecostal church, music can drive how things go. Um, and you can see um, the reaction because of the, the spirit moving in church. And so that's yeah. something that I've always had with me as far as, uh, I think uh, Quincy Jones said, well, no matter what you do in the studio, always leave room for God to, to walk through. Because mm-hmm. there's always a feeling that you, you get when you're performing or you're playing music. Right. It's, it's something about it. 
So that's where it comes from. And then beyond that, it, it was just, I started actually making music when I was 11, you know, like in church playing bass. But then I'm wondering, like, how can I, you know, play this back? How can I make this, you know, yeah. you know, hear this back? So I, you know, took my sisters when she was at school. I came home earlier. Mm-hmm. I would take her little uh, tape machine she would have. Uh, it's like a tape recorder, uh, cassette tape. And I would pop the one dual, cassette the dual in. joint? Yeah. The dual man. tape? Yeah. Pop one side on the Casio keyboard, put the drum mach- drums down, mm-hmm. try to keep the time as best I could for three minutes. Yeah. Pop it over, play it, and then play the piano on it for three minutes. Pop it over. And that was my first experience multi-tracking. Damn. Yeah. And then I got the first... Computer we had in the house, a little HP. My mom told me not to touch. But then when she was at work, I would be touching that, downloading programs, making that joint crash until I found something called Acid Pro. Yeah. And all that would let you do is just take waves. And that's when I first learned how to sample and go from kick to kick and sample stuff. So Acid Pro was the was one of the first. Because if you, if you think about it, that's how, um, what's the joint that everybody like to use now? Uh, Ableton. 100%. So Acid Pro was the first Ableton. The first, it, it was actually Acid Pro turned into Cool Edit Pro. See, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I Cool and Edit Pro. That, yeah. And we, so we, we were working with Acid Pro, and then, and then Cool Edit Pro turned up, and then the, we, like, then we learned, okay, we can take beats and just load it in here. Yeah. And then it was just, and then after that, I by that time I had met Benz, and we're talking about high school, like, very formative and we link up, and it's kind of like you, you kind of get a feeling about somebody, mm-hmm. but you just don't want to lean in too much. That's kind of what it was when me and Ben's first first linked up. It was like, I feel like this person is special, but it's like, I don't know. It, 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 you might have to, I might have to double check with him because it felt like in that part of life, I know I was looking for something to yeah. attach to. And I know at that point, he was uh, beginning to really start writing. Right. So it was like, again, we talked about timing. Mm-hmm. It was just perfect timing. So we started linking up at a, in Fairfax High School in uh, Dr. Johnston's class. Dr. Johnston ran a class, and this man saved my life. I'll shout out to him, too. He saved my life. Dr. Johnston. Dr. Johnston, big shout. Because Fairfax Academy, it was only taking A-B students to, to come into the academy to learn how to work the, the recording equipment, keyboards, right. MIDI, and stuff like that. But he saw me as a D student and, and pulled me out of a you know, the secondary school and, and got me back into public school and really got my, my act together. Mm-hmm. So much so that, you know, that drew in Benz, that drew in Robbie, that drew in a lot of different pieces from that school. Right. Uh, to actually do recording and learn music at the very base level. And then from there, it was just all I, all I was worried about. It's that was the first tech I school, mean. too, music tech school, right? Because yeah, it's Fairfax it and then it's, uh, uh, where, where uh, Lou at? My boy Lou is teaching the other tech school um, West West Potomac, West Potomac. I think yeah, so. West Potomac. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a beautiful. I mean, dog, I owe that so much, so much so that when I was doing football in, in two days, or the football season was over, and I still had to go to weight training, my coach said, "What are you doing here? Mm-hmm. We know what you're here for. We know what your future is. It ain't football. It ain't this. So when you have this class, go there." Mm-hmm. And it it just changed how I thought about life, and then you start really start developing who you are musically. Right. And and you allow that to to kind of like grow and develop. And and now we're at the point um where we've put out so much music and we've put together so many different projects and been through the ups and downs of situations where you have people working with and, 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 and you wanna you wanna you wanna build with this person and that person doesn't want to do music anymore. You wanna build with these people and those people don't know how to do proper business. Right. So you go through the ups and downs and you're at that point. We're at that point now where it's just it's just comfortable. Like it's just so comfortable to to be in a studio, it's so comfortable to to put projects out, it's so comfortable. Right. Yeah, you know I'm saying it's a part of who I am, how who who we are as far as when we talk about 5813 and, and all the rest of the artists I work with. Culture, uh, Ali Culture, big shout my dog Ali Culture. Shout out to Ali, uh, big shot Rock Solo. That's my brother. We mean rock. business. Rock, Rock gonna get on here too. I talked to Rock. Yeah, yeah, be careful. I just about told that. him. Be careful about that. <laughs> I told him, hey, let me know when, you, when your uh, time, your schedule is, it permits, man. Yeah. We gonna we gonna get you on here. That's a wild um, guy. You 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 know you know Rock to be just the hook kink, but and and, and you know more than other people, mm-hmm. and other people are gonna see a lot more of him as far as his versatility in the next couple, of, eight, eight, eighteen, twelve to eighteen months, man. Because his right. rollout is about to be crazy. 
Yeah, uh-huh. Rock Rock is a grinder. But that's me. That's that's where we started. That's where we at. And it took a lot of mistakes, <laughs> a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of growing. Uh, shout out to my wife Rachel. Uh, she we met me and her been together for sixteen years. She's helped me become the person I am today. Hold you down, man. And somebody it, that's a beautiful thing too. Find somebody who supports your dream. Because yeah. she's never looked at me and go, "How about quit?" In fact, I've never said anything about quitting. And she's never said anything about me quitting, mm-hmm. even to the point where she says, don't think about quitting. Right. It, it's to find somebody who can truly support what you're doing because it was I was doing this before I met her, mm-hmm. and it's not so much as like, it's not going anywhere, but at, at the same time, she she helps it grow. Right. So it, that's, that's, that's a big shout-out. Shout-out to my wife. Shout out to the wife, yeah, man. That's where we were. That's where we are, man. And hey, man, you, you told me some some dope news. You about to be a what? Oh, uh, I'm about to be a girl dad. Girl dad. <laughs> yes, sir. Blessings. Blessings. Big blessings, Fair. man. Blessings, Holly Fair. My mom, moms, and everybody's already told me that we were about to have a very spoiled spoiled baby. So yeah, it's definitely the yeah. girls, man. Like I said, man, they 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 bring you back. If you out there far, they gonna <laughs> reel you in, bro. They gonna reel you in. And it's nothing you can do. You know how you got that one fish that's just trying to like get away and yeah, everything. That's gonna be me. Huh? It's gonna she gonna reel you in, that's dog. Gonna and it's it's gonna be nothing but love, genuine love. And it's gonna it's you already a calm dude, but it's gonna even bring you to some more calmness where yeah. it's like you can really focus even more on the things you do. And the crazy part about it, she's gonna start loving music just like you. Oh man, both my kids, man, they're my A and R's. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm Elena, looking forward bro. To. Like, I promise you, bro, like, if it wasn't for them, like, I got I got a very musical ear, mm-hmm. but they opened my ear up to pop. Mm. They opened my ear up to, to alternative music, everything, even the kid music. Exposing you. You know what I mean? To, Exposing to me to all of this. And I'm like, yo, why do they like, and they know it word for word. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. They, they got the scissors in their playlist. Right. You know what I'm saying? They got, they got the, the Drakes and stuff in their playlist. 21 Savage, which is crazy, but they have it to where it's so diverse and they know all the songs. And it's like, the crazy part is, I think Tootie, my youngest daughter, she's going to be the, the music talent because she loves to sing, bro. So now I'm looking for, you know, like a, um, a vocal, um, vocal coach, coach, and coach stuff. for, yeah, man. you know what I mean? And, and that's what I said, like, starting starting off young is so important because it... it yeah, having a foundation, but it's not so much a foundation of rules, but a foundation of passion. Mm-hmm. Like, my boy, he loves cars. So one thing his his youngest or his oldest son always remembers his dad working on cars, so now it's a bonding experience for him. So now every time he sees a certain car, he gets a memory of, you know, that dopamine. Memory. Right. Like, that's foundation that you lay and you pour for them kids. Like, mm-hmm. that's the one thing that I'm kind of like, Terrified and excited about right. is making sure that I lay the right foundation. That's why we we constantly praying. We constantly, you know, working on it's natural. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We it's just want to be pour natural. The right things into these foundations, yeah. including their music, including the love for being kind. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. The love for just being empathetic. Right. You know what I'm saying. But on top of that, you know, they always gonna do what they see, and they only gonna see us being this. You yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> the same thing we've been. Yeah. So. It's, 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 I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, man, you're going you're gonna to love it, man. Just, Girl just, dad. I'm going to give you a warning dad. now, man. Yo, um, them tears going to come. For who? You. I'm already a, a, a emotionally unstable. That's what I'm, I'm trying to tell <laughs> you, bro. I'm already emotionally when unstable. When that baby come, bro, nah. just, just know you're going to be like, yo, this is, this is me. Uh, I, I, I was a part of this creation. Yeah, man. You know what that's, I mean? That's... And it's going to be like, yeah. He said, them tears are going to come. They're going to come, bro. It's, it, I, I only feel like, especially at the time when it's like going through that situation mm-hmm. where it's actually time for my daughter to get here, it's right. like I'm going to be feeling a lot for my wife at that point too. It's like, yeah, because we're both looking at it, it's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's, it's it's a lifetime's worth of commitment and I'm for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's part of that. You don't talk about military, growing up in a military mm-hmm. household. Structure is so important. Yeah. And understanding like, Again, foundations and being 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 able to 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 set up things. Obviously, life happens, mm-hmm. but being able to set up things in a way that you can kind of prepare. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Prepare, prepare the the person that you're trying to send into this world. 
So look, man, talk to me about this uh takeoff music group. <laughs> yeah, takeoff music group, man. We 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 came up with that. It was me and uh Jay Beto came up with this. Jay Beto's my partner, man. He's he's actually down in uh down in Kissimmee, Florida. Actually, no, I said that wrong. He's down in Tampa. He used to be in Kissimmee. Down mm-hmm. in Tampa Bay, Florida, man. He is a uh a talented artist, producer, engineer. He's helped me in so many different ways. Again, become the type of confident engineer producer that I am now, where it's like you start by pushing people, but you start by pushing yourself. That's one thing that right. Jairus really, Vito really, man, he really taught me a lot. You push yourself first, and then you mm-hmm. kind of set that bar so now you can push others. Right. Um, he's one of the most dope writers I've been around, one of the dope, dopest producers as far as engineering. He's because he has an actual full cell academy and university training. Mm-hmm. He's been able to impart particular things on top of what JL has been able to impart on top of me. Man, back when we first were sitting around thinking about, man, I want to do a production group because you do beats and I do beats. Let's let's sit down. Let's let's put it together. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And it's like the phrase elevator movie music kept coming to, you know what I'm saying? The smooth mm-hmm. elevator music kept coming to my mind. It's like, we don't want to make elevator music, but everybody knows when you hear elevator music, what to think of is it smooths like a, a, we call it yacht rock or mm-hmm. something just to get you from one place to another. Right. If we make music, bro, it's gotta be music that you take off. It's gotta be that feeling of like that first rush when you lift off of the jet plane. <laughs> hey. <laughs> playing the strokes like hey, shit. Like, I listen to a lot of different music. Yeah. I'm over here playing the strokes. That's my watch went off. Yeah. Um, but, no, nah, no, nah, we were talking about if we're going to make any type of music, bro, it's going to be take off, music for taking off. Like, mm-hmm. and not just like in the literal sense, but also in, in the metaphorical sense where I need my people to, to take off from the current place where we're at. Because the one thing we were always talking about was new fans and putting Benz and putting Ali in front of more people and really blowing up. And so we felt like our music behind what we made, people would be able to take off and people would be able to, to grow and blow up. Yeah. And that's part of one thing that I, I love about being a producer is part of your job is to break artists. Right. And take them to that next level, whether it be not nobody knowing them to a lot of people knowing them or a lot of people knowing them to a region knowing them or from a region to the world. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it, it's really about going to steps because there's a lot of different type of money to get out here. So you can actually kind of like plan your path. But at the same time, we felt like our music, the stuff we were trying to take, was going to elevate no matter who it was. Right. So that's where it came from. From there, we added uh, my brother Danny. We added my brother J-Rock. Um, we've added a couple other producers. Um, and, and we got lots of, like, helping hands as far as, you know, I love my dog, Met Boy. Uh, I love I love my dog, uh, Spoken, out, out on the West Coast. Producers and A&Rs and, and engineers that, that help they're not necessarily part of the part of the team proper, mm-hmm. um, but are always helping pitch it, pitch in and 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 help push the music to that point where it's like the next step, the next echelon. Yeah. Um, whether it be just adding effects to a song or adding just a guitar riff or something like that, I have a lot of sources that that pour into that. But take off music group was a, an idea about elevation and separation and pushing pushing to the next level. Nice. Um, that's the whole concept of it. Okay. What well, um question? When you go into a like a a, a session, right? Mm. Are you big on um getting people's contact information first, or wait until the 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 songs be established, be produced, or edited, engineered, whatever? Are you big on like making sure everybody get their name on the song? Absolutely. Like I, I'm. Like I said, there's just so much, so much money to get. And if you're in the room and you're contributing, yeah, I want your name. I want your information on this. You know right. what I mean? It's it's important, like, for branding. It's important for, you know, the back end when you started talking about, again, the business stuff that you really dive into the last five years, as far as me, diving into the last five years and understand how streaming works and, mm-hmm. and linking people up. And the more you can do that, the more plays you can actually get because – the more artists you're linked to, the more that Spotify or that, mm-hmm. you know, title will move over, whatever it is, um, from that person's music to yours. But it's important to, you can't be collaborative without being, um, I want to say, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't be collaborative with, with and be confrontational at the same time. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's like, you can't, you can't, you got to be in the room. You got to, 
You got to, like like I said, leave room for God, but also leave room to be wrong. Because <laughs> yeah. I got an idea, and that idea may work, but at the same time, your idea may, it might spark something in you, and that could take it to the next level. Yep. And because we're all involved, we're all pushing it forward. Like, that's one thing that I, I always try to take pride in, is try to fit in where I can fit in. You know what I mean? In a yeah. certain situation. Because we don't need everybody to be the engineer. We don't need everybody mm-hmm. to be the rapper. We don't need everybody. Somebody, sometimes somebody just needs to sit in the back and go, yeah, I think that's right. Right. You know what I mean? Not be a yes man, but really just not just try to add something just to say I added something. Mm-hmm. If the song is good where it is, it's good where it is. Or yeah. if the song needs to be added to this, just put in that. But yeah, nah, if you're in the room, man, you're you're adding to the situation, yeah, you definitely yeah. on the on the and we, we talked about this earlier too about the, uh, the Andre 3000, like the feeling. Like, you know what I'm saying? If it just don't feel right, like, don't just add something to it and it don't feel right. Forcing it is a big way to take a song, I feel like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a big way. And plus, it's nowadays there's so much going on as far as, like, a hundred, like, like not to the other stream, there's a hundred producers in the room, a couple writers, and, and everybody is jockeying in for position to put the, it's just like, all right, is this going to be an organic process or is this going to be something that's farm factory? And even if it's something that is farmed out, there is an organic feel that can be added to it as long as you're staying authentic to whatever the, whatever the artist's theme is and things like that. There's a thousand ways to skin a cat. But in, in, the, in the real world, I'm thinking, like, you can't be afraid to step out there and, 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 and see if it works, mm-hmm. but you can't be afraid if it doesn't. Right. I, I was in the studio recently where somebody was just kind of like, what are you doing? Like, it's like, I see you over there. You got a song. You got an yeah. idea, bro. Why don't you say it? Oh, he's afraid to say it because he don't want to be made fun of. Part of an engineer, part of a producer's job is to make sure that the whole room understands it's a safe place. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and sometimes that does come with a, a one mic situation where you kind of got to shut everybody else down, not necessarily idea-wise, but quiet the room so the guy in the back can say something because mm-hmm. the guy in the back has been trying to say something for a minute. And it might add something to the song. So mediating the room comes for that too. But again, it comes from the feeling and not interrupting the feeling. Right. It's it's a it's that's the crazy thing about it is too with the engineering and the producing that I've learned a lot more over the last couple of years is that yeah, you gotta learn the buttons, you gotta make sure the music is good, but you gotta take care of the room too. Mm-hmm. And that's take care of that feeling. Right. And making sure that the overall song doesn't go all the way left because we got three writers over here that think the song should go that way. Now, nah, if the song is supposed to be this. Let's kind of stay focused. Obviously, your ideas pitch them in, but if they don't fit the focus, they don't really fit the focus. How can we make that fit the focus? Right. Yes, and situation. No, nah, that doesn't really fit, but if we augment, you know what I mean? Solutions, you know what I mean? But again, yeah, no, nah, it's 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 big on the feeling, man. Like, you, you can't, again, you can't judge somebody's art because in that moment, somebody on the other side of the world may be feeling it. That's, That's the crazy thing about Spotify, That's, right? Yeah. You see all these things booming for bands in Russia. Yeah. What? Like, <laughs> like Ovaria or, or Spotsylvania or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. These weird countries, Latveria and stuff like that, that stuff be booming, like, because they feeling it. Yeah. And it, and it, it may be Ben today and maybe you tomorrow, so, you know what I mean? How do, you, how do you handle different personalities when you when you working with um, artists and and... You know what I mean? Producers, engineers. How do you how do you bring that all together? How do you handle it? I try to be like the Mexican console. I try to be like the Mexican console, the SSL or the knee. You know what I'm saying? You've got all these different pieces in the studio, compressors, uh, EQ, you know, guitar players with effects. They all have their personalities, but you still have to be the thing that mixes it together so that the left and right come out. You know what I'm saying? Right. So one thing that I was I, I've become a big fan of is letting other people argue mm-hmm. because they want to be passionate about what they want to be passionate about. So I let those argumentative people argue. Because at the end of the day, you still have to get it done, right? Yeah. And then at the end of the day, you have people who want to be real quiet and you got to kind of draw them out. I try to use humor in those situations to not make people feel uncomfortable, again, protecting the feeling of the room. Mm-hmm. And you again, you don't want to like, not bully some, obviously not bully somebody, but... Make sure somebody feels safe to say what they want to say. Mm-hmm. If you're in the quiet, would you not feel safe? What's going on? Okay, well, everybody, again, that one mic. Hey, everybody calm down. What's up? Especially if it's an artist. Especially, no offense, especially a newer, uh, younger artist. Mm-hmm. They may feel like, 
well, I got a couple writers here, a couple engineers, the label sent me, da 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 Nah, what do you want? What is, because you got to go in there and get it. Obviously, if you, what you're saying doesn't fit, there's mm -hmm. a compromise that comes along, but right. you got to draw that out of some people. Some people, you got to just let them argue and rant and go. Yeah. Different personalities require different things. My mother is a huge part of that. Man, my mom is a huge part of that. She was a therapist for Fairfax County for, I want to say 15, 20 years, probably longer. She's probably going to get mad at me for that. But she's a missionary as well. Yeah. So there's a balance of understanding that how to deal with people. Right. On a couple of different levels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And what I'm into now is really checking on artists 24 hours before they come to the studio. Making sure that their mind is right before they get there. Because mm -hmm. one thing JL has taught me is when you first lay it down, it's probably the best, you know what I'm saying? Like, recording it the best way is the best way to get a great recording, right? right. You know I mean, you can't sit around and EQ stuff all day. You got to, you know, fix it in the mix or whatever, but you got to try to get the best recording. And part of that is making sure that, hey, we got the session tomorrow. Don't go out tonight. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, how you feeling? You know what I mean? Do you need to push it back 30 minutes because you need more sleep? You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Right. You know what I mean? And especially if you have your own studio, your own facility or whatever in the schedule to be that flexible. So that's one of the things I'm doing too is trying to like understand that I got younger folks that right. need a little bit more coaching before they mm -hmm. even come to the studio. That's part of dealing with the personalities. Um, but then you have people who are super, 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 super like, I work with an artist, uh, Ember, uh, uh, Miguel Rivera. He's a super polished artist. I don't right. have to check on him. I don't have to, I just got to kind of follow through what his plan is and that you come back to that whole I'm the mixing board situation where he has this and he has his team and everything's and just follow through. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there's some people who need more, more coaching, like in the moment, record this this way, record that that way. It's just taking care of people, taking care of that feeling. Yeah, man. I think um, a lot of times too is, is when you're dealing with, with a lot of different personalities, man, you got to also think at the, the years, the ages, because I think, the, you know what I mean? This The youth, the, it's the youth now, like, we're older, you know what I mean? So it's like, you try to let them carry the ship. Yeah, you know I, I mean? man, 100%, cause especially because, I mean, I listen to a lot of the new stuff, but it's like, they are entrenched in it, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, it is representative of where they're at right now. So you right. just kind of, like, let them be them. You know the rules, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, let them be them within a version of those rules. You know what I mean? Right. Other than a version of that, you know, ability. Yeah. Um, you coming to the house and, and screaming on the mic and clipping everything. You know what I'm man. saying? <laughs> I, I, had a, I had an artist like that, man. I was recording them, man. I'm like, like, why are you so angry, bro? It's, like, it's, yeah, you don't have to. That's the one thing. We went through a phase of that. You don't have to scream to get yeah. across your feeling. You can actually you know, actually perform it. It's a mm -hmm. performance. You know what I mean? And that's something, yeah. too, that a lot of younger artists that I'm trying to get across don't understand just yet is, like, the studio is not the stage. The studio is literally the film studio. It's the... Mm -hmm. the, the, the it's the, the, the creation the, of yeah. The, it's the, the that that volume thing that yeah. the Marvel people be using. This is where we will cut and cut and cut until we get the right take. Yep. And then you take that, and then you get that right so you can perform it for the people. Like... Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's another thing that a lot of artists are kind of like, their mind is being blown where it's like, okay, this is, you know, we're we're going to get this right. You don't have to just try to knock it out in one take or, yeah. you know, piece it together or get it done in 10 minutes because you see somebody else gets it done in 10 minutes. They get it done in 10 minutes because they've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. And and let's caveat off the, uh, the mom, your mom was a therapist. Yeah. So how did that, how did that help you growing up? Oh, man, it helped a lot. It helped a lot. My, my father actually, um, my father actually passed away when I was 16. My condolences. Yeah, it's, it's all gravy. I appreciate that. He's, he was, uh, uh, they, they buried him over at Arlington Cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, so going through that, that, you know what I'm saying? Everything happened for a reason, bro. Because after that, before that, I was, I was pretty solid. I wasn't no A-B student, but I was pretty solid. But after that, I did like four schools in five years. Just from going through the dealing couldn't with. Because yeah. I put my hands on, trying to put my hands on people and stuff yeah. like, because you were angry. Right. You know what I mean? But she growing in her therapy and kind of like growing, because you got to remember, first she got to, my mom's going through grief too. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So beyond that, since so she's going through grief too, like beyond family, that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. then you got me tripping and then like she had to come back and use some of her therapy training and 
being a mom and growing up in Chicago and then right. on top of all that, you know, being being a, a missionary in the church, use all of that to kind of come and, and it came to a point where we had weekly sit downs, like therapy sessions where I would come mm-hmm. to her room, sit down and have to like go through things. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? But now I understand like before it was agonizing. Yeah. I don't want to talk to you about this, but now I understand like that's where the growth is. Yeah. That's where the real and, growth and is. And I think, I think too, bro, like with that, with that, it's like it made you, it made you understand me and Ben's, you know what I'm saying? What we've been going through. And you know what I'm saying? Ben's told me you sent him the text. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, bro, he did what? Like, I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? I remember you hit me. You hit me. You told me, say, bro, whatever you need, whenever you want to come over, just come over, bro. If you just want to just chill, you ain't got to work on no music. Just pull up. Just pull up. Just pull up on me. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, like, you know what I mean? I know what it is, bro. Yeah, I'm like, that's that's big, bro. Yeah, like, cause yeah, you know, know what I'm saying? Is. And that's why I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta tell, oh, yo, thank you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause at the yeah. end of the day, like, bro, you don't get that from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got a lot of friends that say they friends, but when shit hit the fan, not no, no disrespect, they nah. just don't know how to handle it. Big time. That's a you big know what one. Yeah, and yeah, they don't know how to be, come be, at you with it. It'd be some tunnel vision sometimes where it'd be like, I'd be in my own zone or your own island. Right. And then you really just look over like, oh, damn. Like, oh, man, he's going through. Like, uh, uh, yeah. like, uh. But at the same time, it's like, you can take two seconds. Yeah. It's not not pointing a finger at nobody, no nothing. At all. Because at the same time, you it's, it's about growth. So you have to kind of go through some things. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of understand, okay, if I was, and that's where the empathy comes from. And that's one thing my mom helped me a lot with was the, the understanding of empathy and how far that can take you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How far taking two seconds and not trying to get in somebody else's brain because you'll never do that. Like Can't. you'll never, ever yeah. think like somebody else's. But just putting yourself in your mental capacity in their shoes, could you? Right. Nine times out of ten, I couldn't. Right. Like I couldn't. Like you would because of, you know, fortitude and mm-hmm. upbringing and blah, blah, blah. But in that moment of being okay to snap into a situation of not being okay, I couldn't. Yeah. So let me reach out. Yeah, because I'm telling you, bro, like, I was like, shit, yeah. bro, I didn't, I didn't create for months. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, everything that I was trying to create, I was trying to force it. So what yeah. I did was, like, this one thing about me, I never delete beats. You're, you're, you're a real one. I never delete them. You're a real one. I, I might not finish them, yeah, yeah, that's that's you know what yeah, I mean? that's everybody. But I keep them and I save them just just because, like, I know at that present time I couldn't get to what I want, where I wanted to create out of it. But I'm gonna come back because I okay. know, like, I heard something, but my mind just ain't letting me create it right now. So I'm gonna right. just get back to you when I get back right. to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's a bunch of I got a bunch of projects not finished. But that's okay, cause I mean, shit. Look, I'm dropping shit all the time. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? And shit, I'm we doing stuff. I'm yeah. doing stuff with other artists. It's like I learned how to take a step back and just live, mm-hmm. and stop trying to just put music, 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 mm-hmm. music. You know what I mean? Force feed it like when it's already a natural gift that yeah, I have. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro told me that when you were in the beat block or writing block, it's cause you ain't gone outside. Yeah. I said, man, nah, he's real. It's a fact. You ain't gone and lived. You, we, this is all just stemming from the creativity we do is all stemming from every day. That's why hip hop is cool. The closest thing together with two genres is hip hop and country music because mm-hmm. of the authenticity. Yep. You really talking about what you live. Like yep. pop music, you can get an old pop singer to write your song about love or write your song about breakup. A and party it'll, or it'll, dance. It'll pop. You know, yep. as long as the music goes and there's a guitar, you know, a cool guitar riff, especially for like rock music, as long as there's a cool breakdown yeah. or it t- changes enough, it's not so much about the content or what the people are saying. Hip hop and country music is about the authenticity. So you have to go actually get some of that and bring it back to the studio. Like, whether it be good or bad. Like, bro was the same way when when, when little bro Dooney, Dooney, Dooney got, you know what I mean, uh, taken from us. It was it was a full stop. It yeah. was a full stop for Benz. It was a full stop for, for, for Ali. It was a full stop. Yeah. Like, but I went home that night and made, like, three or four beats because that's how I get it out. Mm-hmm. But bro and them, they couldn't get it out. Right. So just like when it was like, yo, just come around. Same yeah. thing with them. Like, he would just come around. I would just play music. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, yo, this is dope. I want to rap on this and then sit there. Yeah. And he said it, too. He said he gave away a lot of 
he passed on a lot of stuff because he, like, he wasn't there. Him and him and Ali both. There's like three songs on the radio. Like three songs of legit Reds played on the radio. Shout out DJ Reds. Yeah. Shout out DJ Shout Reds. Out DJ Red. Um played on the radio that were legit have if you look at the Pro Tools sessions, they got Ben's verses and Ali verses underneath them, Joe. Mm-hmm. And they just, yeah. But again, too, it's like, it's a it's a gift. It's not a curse. It's a gift because, like, even though you know you put something down on it, it was still able to go to somebody else that you rock with and it and it's still doing what it's supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? We kept it in, we kept it in a unit. Well, yeah. We kept you just it keep it in the family, you know man. And that's what... That's what kind of helped, like, you know what I'm saying, with me too, like just just keeping keeping people close to me that I know for sure that's that's it ain't it's, it's more than music. Yeah, you know I mean? man. It has to be. It's more it than music. It has to be, because especially on on the front side of the like on the real life side, it has to be more than music. And then now dealing with Wally, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shout out my my man Wally from Shout Taylor out Wally. Gang. Um Taylor Gang. Yeah, uh Wolfpack Studios. We just opened this new studio out, and that's another big, big piece. I was Sterling, Virginia, Wolfpack Studios. Yeah. Uh, one thing that he's kind of bringing into the the element is that on the backside, it's got to be more than music too. It's got to be this. It's got to be the content. It's got to be the, the long form, short form. It's got to be all of that on top of the music. So on the front side, it's got to be the relationships, mm-hmm. you know, the, the community, the network. The music is going to naturally occur, especially when those outsides is happening and link ups is happening right. and this is happening. It's going to drive the music. You know what I'm saying? Life is life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For real. Life uh, be we life. Were supposed to shoot this, we were supposed to shoot this a couple days ago, but yeah. life started life. That shit started life. <laughs> and you was like, bro, I ain't trying to duck you. I ain't, I ain't trying, trying to duck you, bro. I want to come up to MD, but they yeah. tease us. Um, yeah. It, it's just like it, it comes back to it, man. It's just you gotta go out and get some life, and then you come back, and and then you make the music, and then on the backside of the music, you do all the content to support the music, and then it's just a big Ouroboros loop. You just keep mm-hmm. going around and around and around, yeah. just feeding, recycling, the yeah. recycling little circle. Yeah. And once you do that, man, it's like everything is gonna fall in place. Yeah. Because you're doing the same things, mm-hmm. but you're doing it, building it with adding additional people and pieces to it. And then that's what makes everything blow. And when everybody blow, you go to your story, you go to Ben's story, you go to my story, you go to JL's story. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, I'm like, damn, like y'all been, yeah. oh, sh- like, oh, yeah. Wally, oh. Yeah. Cause I was like, yo, I was like, yo, like, you know, you know this guy named Wally? Like he be in my stories. I don't know him. He's like, oh, yeah, that's bro. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody's, we're, we're watching each other, but we also rooting. One hundred percent, and yes, asking, yeah. "Hey, what you need?" Yeah, man, what you need from me? You bro? the king of the what you need text, and I appreciate that, bro. I swear, I, I, I just <laughs> ask, hey, bro, what you, you need? Appreciate, I appreciate what you need from that. Me. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, as much as you want to add stuff to people, what they got going on, I'm always here. Like, hey, you need me, bro? What you need? I got you. What you need? All right, can I do this? Give me a couple of weeks, or you know what I'm saying? Like, well, no, oh, we you can fit it in because you yeah. know what I'm saying. Again, it's like I appreciate you, so I that grace that because you got things going on too. But then you reached out, man. Come on, man. Yeah. It's just about being proper and like I said, that thing that comes along with when you've been doing re- gaining relationships, garnering the stuff for right. a little bit of time. You, especially when you get it off the off the love, you, yeah. you nurture it a little bit more, so you respect it a little right. bit more. So if I'm gonna ask you for something, I'm gonna give you that time, that grace to get it done. Mm-hmm. And on top of that. It's more like I'm gonna trust you to get it done in the way you want to get it done. Yeah, here's a, here's a crazy thing. Remember last Christmas? Was it was it Christmas or right before right before New Year's? We all linked up at JL crib. I think it was. It was right it before was New right Year's. Before New Year's, yeah, because holidays was done. You I remember? You remember what we did? Yep. Did you Did you get some some things accomplished on that? You joint? know what's wild? God is great. God is great because I put down on there, oh, I want to do 20 hours of studio time. I got to build a booth. I got to get the the power supply for the recording console. And my brother Ben looks at me and goes, everything you pray for, you work for, right. and you achieve. Yeah. And I almost cried because it's right. Because like, yeah. like I said, we're getting ready. To like We actually have a commercial facility now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We have all of the equipment that we, we need. Right. Not everything we want because we want it all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we gearheads over there. We want it all, but we don't have everything we want. We have everything we need. Right. And and we're starting the process of actually bringing in artists and putting them through a system that can actually see returns. 
yeah. and not just on the monetary side, but mm -hmm. an organic return on fans and and shows and 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 putting people in in again the next level, yeah, and level and up. Um, and that's what I pray. Sat there with that thing and said, "Yeah, I want to do twenty hours." And now, now I'm sitting here like. Phone is literally booming between booming. between clients calling in from one side and mm -hmm. clients that I already have and and then situations like this and like where am I gonna fit this? It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's and it's just gonna get more and I can't yeah. wait. I can't I, wait. Uh I got it, I got so mine was like, you know, it was like, you know, a house. I'm gonna get a house. Mm -hmm. But remember, our thing is not 12 months, it's 18 months. It was 18. Yeah. So we still got time. And then, you know what I'm saying? Um, the crazy part is I'm adding stuff on it that wasn't on there, i.e. podcast. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And Kadeem and you, like, bro, this shit is an amazing thing, bro. This shit yeah, bro. you're doing is yeah. it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to do. And I felt like it too, it was like, man, it was to me, it was more like therapy. You know what I'm saying? Always like is. I can I can get what I really feel off my chest and I can talk about it and I can talk about it with people that either relate or going through the same thing or have 100%. their own s similar situation. 100%, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it's like that, that, uh, bro, I got that shit in my, in he my. He said he's adding more things? Yeah. That's what's up. I'm adding more, bro. That's what's up. Because Cause that, it really did. Because accountability yeah. is nothing that scares me, but it's like, oh, you want me to write this down? Right. And it was, <laughs> and it wasn't, it wasn't your typical write your goal down yeah, what you want to do. It was, Write what you want, mm -hmm. and on the left side, write what you want, and on the right side, what's stopping you? Like, literally, you're going to tell yourself, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm bullshitting, self-doubt. You know what I mean? Um, capital. I need capital. I need, you know what I yeah. mean? Self-reliance, self-direction. You know what I mean? I'm really writing down the things that's stopping me. You know what I'm saying? So I, like, literally looked at it, and I got it in my closet. So every time I get dressed, it's right, right there. there. You know what I'm saying? People was like, oh, why you ain't got it in your room? I said, because I'm normally going to get dressed. Mm -hmm. I go in my closet. See what I want to do, what shoes I want to wear. Boom, it's right there. So I see it all the time, and I be looking at that shit like, damn, I just added some more shit to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That I ain't, I wasn't thinking about. I wasn't thinking about no podcast a year ago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's, it's John Bowman now. You know I mean, I wasn't thinking about it, but now it's here, and it's like, oh. And people like ask me like, yo, so you done with the music? Oh, I love that. I love that. I'm like, I love that. I love that because it's not so much that they doubt you or anything like that, bro. But it's just that they see how 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 successful, not successful, not saying it's not successful, but how good mm -hmm. you are at this. Yeah. So it's like you, you just might want to stop making beats. Like, yeah, they're nah, like, they're like you don't do the music. I said, bro, the music don't stop. It don't ever stop. They don't ever stop. I you just heard the shit I played. You, oh, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. Exactly. I already just sent it to book to uh to Benz yeah. and, and sent you the stamp. Yeah, so it's like, yes. bro, I'm never not working when it comes to the music. But this is something I feel like is it's gonna. Says, are you done with the music? Yeah, it's see, they see, it. they see it, man, and they just like, oh, if I was him, I would just. But yeah, what you gotta understand is it takes like five or six. At least. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. what I'm trying to show them. I'm like, look, man, like, this is another source. Mm -hmm. Music gonna always be the the, mm -hmm. the the main focus, but you also gotta have these things to, to help you build around it because if one falls, you still got some stuff to fall back on. 100%. You know what I'm saying? You still got people that's gonna still be around, that's gonna bring in, you know what I mean? And it's like, and I get it, because some people, like, women and men, like, they don't they don't understand it. But they like, oh, okay. All right. You know what I mean? Until they really see it. And really, really put it in their face. Mm -hmm. And they, they'll click. And then by that time, it's, it'll be, unfortunately, it will not be too late, but it'll be more of a. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be more like, like you should have listened. I, I tried to tell you. You should have listened. Yeah. But that's what I said, man. That's, that's, I like that. I love that. Because it's like they see how talented you are at it. And they see how. People will glom to it. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. It's just because me, I think, too, like I said, like, recruiting helped me, man, um, talk to people because I, I was very standoffish, but I'm a Virgo. You know what I'm saying? I'm an introvert at heart, but I'm also an extrovert when when I'm around my people. people when you want to be around somebody, yeah, you want to be around, around my person. people, I'm yeah. an extrovert. So I tell them all the time, like, I'm an ambivert. I can turn it off and I can turn it on. <laughs> but at the same time, the recruiting phase of it, it helped me because you had to... Build rapport. Yeah. And that's what building relationship is. You building yeah. rapport with that person. 
no matter if it's a a a, a man a man man relationship mm-hmm. like hey, we friends um or or a man and women relationship where you know what I'm saying y'all in a relationship like an actual yeah, a romantic romantic dating yeah. romantic relationship you know what I'm saying so just building that rapport bro I, I learned that like and listening listen with a purpose man don't just listen to speak or listen to reply. Right. Listen, listen intently to yeah, yeah man. Because you can just people will tell you who they are. People will tell you what they want. You just have to listen to them. Listen for facts and feelings. Yeah. <laughs> listen to build trust. Yeah. Listen yeah, to man. understand. Yeah. And man. if you do all those four, I'm telling you, bro. Like it's no way in hell you not gonna win. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like you're you're gonna win. Like you're gonna understand people better. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna you're gonna fit in. The 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 direction you're trying to go, like you're gonna get in it that, in that a lane. Bit of, it takes a bit of humbleness too. Yeah, it takes a bit of all right. Let me move my f and e's out the way, my right. feelings and emotions out the way. Let me move into a point where like I can actually be that empathetic person. Mm-hmm. It takes that point, and, and a lot of people struggle with that because they feel like nobody's ever been that for them. Right, and that that sucks. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say about that. Because sometimes sometimes where, it do like you you feel like like. You feel like, all right, I'm doing all of this stuff and I'm not getting any recognition. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you want the recognition, but the people ain't giving it to you. See, and then that that comes back to my kind of like root-based theory of mm-hmm. like, are you just doing it for the recognition? Right. So that's why I like music that you make, it's got to be for you. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be for people that, you know, you think you could not necessarily help, but people who are in the same vein as you because recognition comes from people that you didn't think that, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I mean? The masses. And right. You got cross appeal. That's right. the recognition that a lot of people are looking for. Like, if you are okay with it, like like Dave Chappelle was saying when he told his dad he wanted to do comedy. Mm-hmm. Say, you want to make it in comedy? What does that mean? He goes, well, you're a school teacher and you make 30 bands. So I figure if I make 30 bands a year of, of comedy, I'd make it. What do you, like, there's where you're gauging, where's your levels yeah, of, you know what I'm bro. saying, where you're trying just, to be. And it's just like people have this thing where it's like, I have to have this. I have to be Timberland. I have to be Kanye. You can if yeah. you're willing to to do what they've done to get to where they're at. And that's a lot, bro. That's a right. lot of sacrifice. Right. That's a lot of sacrifice, bro. Like. <laughs> sacrifice on my leg, dog. Look, bro. You know what I'm saying? Sacrifice. It's a Bless. lot. It's a it's lot. Two. You yeah, got, you yeah. got two. You, if you want, look. If you want one, you gotta put down the other. Yeah, because you, one when you when you do one, the other one's gonna come. Yeah, absolutely. You, know I mean? you sacrifice the blessings gonna come. Absolutely. You know what I mean, if you if you getting all these blessings, then there's gonna be some sacrifice you're gonna it's have to, to do. Come. It's gonna be it's a gonna balance. To it's you gotta, gotta be have a balance. It. So you know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like that scale. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it's based on like what you want to do and what you what you don't want to do. But yeah, like even with the recognition too, though, you uh sometimes the recognition from your 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 team can can get you far. That's that's a good team though. That's yeah. that that to me that's a good team. It's, it's somebody who I like, was just talking to Wally uh, the other day about team building and, and we're putting right. a team together. It's like we want to have people who are proud to be in every position, right? Because if you're proud to be in, if you're proud to be the janitor, you're proud to be the A and R, you're proud to be the engineer then you will know for a fact that'll come through in your work, right? Mm-hmm. And that makes it easier for, if you're the janitor, that makes it easier for the engineer to walk in and be like, hey, man, I seen that bathroom today, man. Thank you. Yeah. And that does build that report. Like, yeah, you should jump out there and say thank you. But just doing your job at a high level around people who appreciate jobs being done at a high level, right? the appreciation will come back. Yeah. And it doesn't always yeah. come back in a, hey, thanks for that. It may mm-hmm. come back, well, if my job is to clean the right side and your job is to clean the left side, that's how me and Ali work. Yeah. Oh, you going to show me some love? All right, bet. I'm going to show you this much love. Yeah. It's, you going to clean that up like that? You going to do this? All right, bet. You going to do that? I'll do this. Yeah. Well, bro, that's usually a two-person thing. Well, all right, that was a two-person thing you did. Mm-hmm. You chill. I'm going to do this. Yeah. And it's that's where the appreciation comes from. It's like, okay, I'm not going to do this or I am going to do this because I know they're depending on it. Right. And and they're gonna appreciate it by showing me the things that I need them to do and getting it done. Right. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's really where it is too. And that's a lot of people want that pat on the back. A lot of people want that thank you. And those are good things. Those are great things. But a lot of times, especially in a situation where you're talking about business or relationships, even with my wife, like 
I don't say thank you every time she does the dishes, but she don't say thank you every time I take the trash out. Right. But she she's never going to let me not eat, and I'm never going to let her, you know what I'm saying, right. be in an unsafe situation. We appreciate each other by mm-hmm. acts. But then, yeah, I was saying thank you and yada, yada. That goes a lot way, too. But yeah. the actual act of appreciation. The act of service. Yeah, dog. Act of That's why I think like all my military, thank you for your service. Appreciate it, bro. And I say that for what's serious, yeah. not just because my dad, because you made a choice to go do. Right. Ain't no draft. You made a choice. So when somebody makes a choice to work at a high level, I appreciate it. Yeah. Because yeah, now, now you now y'all equal. And and now y'all can y'all can balance off each other. Yep. You can feed off each other. Yup. Yo, so look, every end of the podcast, bro, I do gym class. We in the gym, you know what I'm saying? And I always say, Give somebody a gym that they can put in a toolbox, a next workout, something they need to keep with them. What's a gym you got? The most dangerous thing a person can have is a lack of imagination. Mm. Tell me more. Um, structure is important. Rigidness is a, is a killer. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying paranoia is, is key, but you always want to prepare for the worst, and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. So having an imagination about, for instance, a studio session, I had no idea who I was meeting. I had no idea. It was just texting back and forth with this new client, and I come back in. He's a a, a little bit uh, darker than I am, Mm -hmm. bigger guy, but he wants to do country music. Just by talking to him on the phone and by talking to him, you would have never guessed that he wants to do Americana style, you know, more modern pop, mm-hmm. poppy country music. Right. Like Rumor Deer, kind of. A little bit, right? Yeah. Right? A little bit. A little bit, maybe a little bit more blue glassy feel. But it's fine. I'll let you hear some of the stuff. It's yeah. cool. Um, but without having kind of a fluid kind of attitude, it'd be like, oh, I can't work with this guy. Mm-hmm. Or what is God doing? Like, uh, lean in. Had an imagination. Lean in. Because you can't, as an engineer, as a producer, I can't ever push an artist without allowing situations in life to push me mm-hmm. and not lean in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And one thing I always say in the studio is I don't ever tell an artist no or tell a room full of you know writers and we can't do that. It's We might not be able to do it that way, but we might be. I don't ever say no without having a solution to back right. it up. I always got to have, don't come to me with a problem without a solution. Please. You know Please, dog. Like, Please bring me some I understand, solutions. like, I understand. Give me options. And if there is no options, tell me there's no options so we can work on an option together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, there and there's no options. We need to find one. Like, that needs to be the end of the sentence. Yeah. Just don't let it be. There's a problem. Like, that's that's not proactive. Like, that's not going to mm-hmm. move things forward. So it'll take things to the next level. So it's always important for me to have an imagination in most situations. Right. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's white and black. But there's only a gray area because there is white and black. Like, right. But that gray area can be massive in a lot of different situations. So, like coming in, coming into a to a studio session and feeling like your favorite compressor and your favorite EQ are gonna work and then they don't. What you gonna do? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm Listen, man. I had that same issue when I was working with Kerry Gordy. I had everything set up. He had this dope artist. Shout out to Ayla, man. Ayla, man. I gotta link you with her too, man. Super talented, like, teenage girl, man. Voice of a grown woman. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I thought everything was working, but for some reason, it's it was something messed up. And then I had to go back and look. So ever since then, man, I go look at my, I look at my template, mm-hmm. and I go and I turn off. It's pretty much everything. I just want the raw recording. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Because, because I don't want nothing interfering or anything. And then when I turn anything on, then I can start tweaking. Right. You can start just give me that, that raw right. vocal. You what, what you I'm hear saying? in your headphone while you're recording right. is what you hear back. Right. Yep, that's what I want to hear. So ever since then, man, I was like, man. But I almost, you know what I'm saying? I could have crashed out. And then that 24-hour studio session, you know what I mean? He broke it up in 888. Mm-hmm. Could have been nothing. It, it could have been no session at all. But me, you know what I mean? Just figuring it out. Like, oh, sh- all right. Troubleshoot. Got to be right, on cool. your feet. Got to be Here on your go. toes. You got to you know be ready saying? for anything. And you got to be prepared for the worst. Yeah, man. Like that. Oh, man, I appreciate you, bro. Always. Yeah, this is, this is um, a treat, man. I really appreciate you bringing me out, man. 
Shout out to everybody. Um, man, thank you. Thank you. For real, bro. Appreciate and like it. that, we go. Relationships, Relationships worth more than money. Podcast. Yes. Episode six. Episode six. I'm talking relationships worth more than money. No time for the fake, but.